Hey guys, in today's video, I wanted to introduce you my friend Jima. Jima and I are biking across New Zealand this winter, and we met while biking across the country this summer. And I think Jima has a lot of really awesome perspectives to share with us about just like life in general, who they are in terms of like bicy biking and bicycle touring and everything else. So um, I want you to meet the person that I'm gonna be sharing a tent with for the next month and a half this winter. <laughs> Um, as we go across the country on like a 16 hour flight or whatever it is. And it's, it's more than that. It's like 32 if you yeah, right. like the, layovers and stuff. The difference is like 16 hours, but like oh yeah, the layovers is going to be like 32. But um, anyways, yes, let's, let's dive right into this little interview. So the first question is that we met on a cross country bike tour this summer and that's when we became besties. Mm -hmm. But I want everyone here to know in depth how you decided to sign up for the tour. Um, for those of you who don't know, the tour was with the Ullman Foundation. It was two and a half months biking from Baltimore, Maryland to San Francisco, California, and it was a supported group bike tour. So, Jima, how did you hear about the tour, and what convinced you to sign up for it? Yeah, so I I have a friend who works at the climbing gym that I go to who did this ride back in 2017. And I walked into the climbing gym one, one day, and she was like, do you want to bike across the country this summer? And I was like, sure. I just, and I, I thought about it for like a week and I didn't really like think of anything else that is better to do, especially because I, I'm a PhD student, in human, PhD student in humanity and I'm kind of aware of what I do professionally, doesn't necessarily help people in the obvious ways. So when I moved to Baltimore, I knew I wanted to do something to help people and biking across the country to raise money and awareness for cancer seemed like a really, it's a really good way for me to just like contribute to the society that I take so much away from, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you contribute so much with your presence. Mm -hmm. So, the next question is, you haven't ridden a bike since you were a child before you decided to sign up for this bike tour. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people are afraid to go on bike rides and bicycle touring because they don't have the experience, but you quite frankly, just like didn't give a damn <laughs> um, and decided to go bike 4,000 miles. So what gave you the confidence and or delusion to make such a massive jump in cycling? Yeah, I mean, I was, honestly, I was stupid, like, looking back, because I thought cycling was something people do to exercise when they don't like exercising. Don't, don't attack me. I change that right now. But, so I was like, that doesn't sound that hard, right? So, and I was talking to my friend who did it, and she said a lot of the people in the team, like, when she did it, were not athletes. They were not cyclists. So I was like, and I've been rock climbing for a while, like for a year, and I was running a lot. So I was quite confident about my physical capacity. So I was like, yeah, that sounds doable. But I feel like this year was particularly different because so many people are athletes. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot harder than expected, but Mm -hmm. you know, I still managed to do it. So. Did, it, did it like at any point did it get easier? Oh yeah, I feel like after like the first week was a little scary because I knew everybody else had more experience than me and we we're also going through Appalachian which is one of the hardest parts to bike in. So I was nervous and like it was hard but then I realized that I was not that much behind from anybody else so I, after that, I kind of stopped worrying about it, and then things got easier. Nice. Until, until I go to Colorado and I start wheezing. <laughs> Just like me. Yes. Um, you and are not wheezing in Colorado, though. <laughs> well, maybe you weren't there when I was. Okay. <laughs> and um, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm going to say this to the camera. Um, for those of you who don't know, I had to teach Jima how to use gears, like literally a month before the trip started. Yeah. So that, that was the level of non-cyclist we were at. But you, you learn fast. <laughs> you learn fast. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next question is, this summer trip was hard for you. And I know that for many reasons, because I was with you on the trip. 
Um, and I'd like for you to share what made biking across the country particularly hard for you um, in terms of whether it was like physical, mental, emotional. Um, what were some of the challenges of biking for two and a half months from Maryland to California? I feel like I, I'm pretty sure this was hard for everybody in the team, but I, we usually have choice over who you spend time with and how much time you spend time with, uh, how much time you spend with certain people. But it was very hard that we were 12 cyclists and we had to kind of spend a lot of time with each other because like usually the, if it's like 30 people, like they used to be, it's like you can pick your own people rather easily, but 12 is an odd number where like you do have to kind of be around everybody. And that was really hard. And especially because I was not, I, I was, I finished my undergrad and I came to grad school right after. So I was not, I was kind of exposed to only like certain kinds of people and being around people that I usually don't spend a lot of time with <laughs> was quite difficult. It's, I feel like it's one thing that I learned, like it, it was definitely a learning experience too. Cause mm -hmm. you know, you can't, I feel like I was taking it for granted that I was around like really supportive, really liberal friends. Mm -hmm. But like yeah. through this trip, I was like, I need to appreciate them more. Like, yeah. Yeah, and don't want to get like too too in depth about what some of the issues were, but like, if I don't know if there's any that you want to share, not, like not to name names, but like whether it was feeling like I don't know judged in a certain way, or was it just like some political differences? Like, what were those the things that made it difficult with these people? I mean, political differences always hurt, but I feel like we were most like we we're kind of good at avoiding it for most of the time. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I feel being being the only person of color for like most of the trip was definitely difficult because mm -hmm. it was not it was not any like malicious intent from anybody, but they just don't understand being a person of color in the middle of the US like yeah. So obviously being the only Asian person in the city. Mhm. Mm and especially because I have an accent, that also like stands out too. Yeah. And I was at times feeling, it's it's not so much what people did, but it's just like I felt the weight of mm -hmm. being the odd one out. Yeah. As, especially you know, like the rural areas that we were in yeah. or like the other other like states or areas where it's like, they might maybe have never seen like a person of color or something like that. Yeah. Cause I live in Baltimore, who, which is like not. It, Baltimore City doesn't have a lot of Asian people, but I'm at Hopkins, and there are a lot of international students there. Mm -hmm. And I feel I feel really like comfortable around those places, but yeah, it was definitely like going out of my comfort zone to being the middle, like. <laughs> middle of nowhere really yeah i don't think anybody felt that comfortable around those areas <laughs> yeah not even me and like i blend in you know mm. I, I blend in pretty well um so then what were some we kind of already touched on this but what were some unique fears and challenges that you faced over the summer based on your various identities and you can talk about any identity that you want here like we all have so many um uh, but yeah i think i mean being being the only uh being one um being the only asian person for a while before jack joined mm -hmm. and that was hard and as explained but i think one of the harder honestly the harder part might have been being a phd student because i i had some work that i had to do basically i had a really big exam the Greek exam that was coming up. I study classics, by the way, so that's what I said I was doing useless stuff. But I had my ancient Greek exam coming up after the summer, and the summer time was supposed to be a time when we prepare for it. So I broke my um, my iPad with and downloaded all the Greek text, and I was reading it on the way, 
and I feel it was really difficult because you know if I just bike from one place to one place and then you can rest that's that's so much easier but I always was like I have to get to the host ASAP so that I can study as much as possible I think that's why I feel like that's where a lot of the conflict came from because I wanted to fucking like go yeah. and people were taking forever at water stop yeah like, you hurry the fuck up <laughs> Yeah, and thinking back, there was probably a, like a middle ground because sometimes people were taking too long, like, mm-hmm. objectively. But I was also like really nervous about mm. the Greek exam, so I had to study for it. So mm-hmm. it's like, let's get going. But yeah. I didn't pass the Greek exam, so Ooh. if you are a PhD student wondering what to do for the summer, you should bike across the country. <laughs> um. So then what were some of the greatest lessons that you learned from biking across the country this summer? Mm, not everybody is your friend. I'm joking. <laughs> I know, but I second that. I actually second that so deeply because I think I think a lot of times in this in this country we believe that you have to be friends with everybody. Yeah. And I don't agree with that. I don't agree that you have to be friends with everybody. Like you if someone's treating you poorly or you just simply don't click, like you yeah. don't need you don't need to be friends. Yeah, I <laughs> I feel like that's not the lesson. I I lived, <laughs> I lived my life like that. Yeah. I have I have never been everybody's friend because I don't I don't see the value in it. I think I have self respect to like only be friends with people that are nice to me and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, the lesson was I feel like it's gonna be about like what your body is capable of because mm-hmm. I I spend so much time being at my desk just reading books and Greek and Latin and going out this summer just outside every day cycling it's like it's crazy I felt like I had so much more to offer to this world Mm -hmm. and like things that I can do in this world Mm -hmm. than what I thought I did because you know I spent like the time I'm like at the physical prime of my life and then I'm spending I was spending so much time inside and I'm like I I need to I need to take advantage of my my strength right now yeah and can you can you tell everyone like how many miles we were doing like I mean we were I think we're averaging 70 80 wasn't it Mm -hmm. 70 miles 80 miles the longest one was 200 it was uh, after the day that we were cowboy camping in a random park in Austin, Nevada, which had a population of like 75 people. <laughs> we're all like on the, what's it called? Yeah, I'll put a picture. I'll put a picture. Oh, on yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you will see the picture. And that was, that looked like a, like a mental hospital from the <laughs> 60s. But yeah, that 200 miles, it was crazy. But, and then we had 155 miles there. That was harder actually because yeah. of the wind. But thanks to Jaden I the pack. Like we didn't we didn't have to deal with the wind as much as she did, but <laughs> Yeah. Um so then how has this accidental bike tour and I use accidental because I kinda just like you just saw someone talking about it oh, and yeah. then you like decided to show up. How did this accidental <laughs> bike tour change your life since then? It was only a couple months ago that we finished it, but now we have another tour coming up. So how was yeah, how did this thing change your life at all? Yeah, I mean like I would have never done this New Zealand tour with you if I didn't do this, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like the awareness of how much I can do with my body and how much I can, I want to do, and there's so much world outside of my profession, my field. I love, I think I love my field. I love studying classics. I love the ancient world, but it's it's what I do to pay my bill, and I need, I I need life outside and i found that so that was that was the greatest gift from the summer i love that um and so i know that you weren't always an athletic person growing up and you picked up rock climbing about a year and a half ago and now i would say you're an extremely competent cyclist Mm -hmm. how has that been for you going from like a non-athletic person to being athletic what it teach about yourself and your body and uh, anything else yeah i mean I, I grew up really chubby. I was not like 
and I was very made fun of. And it's partially the reason why I moved from Japan to Canada was because I was kind of I didn't have a lot of friends. I was bullied. Uh, I didn't fit into the society very well. And I I built um, I had an eating disorder grade nine in Japan because of like how much people are making fun of my weight. So I lost like I lost like thirty kilogram, which is like I think over around fifty pounds. Whoa! Like over fifty pounds in like three months, and so this is with. So I had a really bad like relationship with sports. It was something that I was never good at. Something that I never felt like accepted in that community. And you know, like when you're a child and like all the cool kids are like athletes,、mm-hmm. and that's why I was like, and I was never one of those people. So I kind of didn't have that really good relationship. And I before rock climbing, I actually. Started a Japanese martial arts called Naginata when、mm-hmm. I was at McGill University, and that was like the first like my big comeback to the athletic field, and that was a lot of fun. And I gained back a a lot of confidence back then, and rock climbing really did change my, um, my life in a way. But yeah, to be a, to me that kind of like, this is like a biggest fuck you to. People that didn't like me made fun of me when I was young,、mm-hmm. and I'm like, I can do it. Yeah, like, I can do it probably better than you can now,、mm-hmm. and it it feels good. Yeah,、like、this is um, this is my moment of like reclaiming sports as something that I enjoy. Yeah, something that I'm part of. Hell yeah,、really nice. yeah. I'm glad that you chose these two because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs>、um, Um, I mean, I want to do like I want to learn a lot. Like I want to do surfing, but I don't know how to swim. So oh, we'll work on that. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> I need to learn too how to swim, but I want to do surfing. I want to do diving. I feel like a lot of because of the success this summer, I definitely more. I want to try a lot more stuff.、Mm-hmm. And it's not like I'm kind of. I don't think I have that like as much emotional attachment to climbing and bike. I do. I love those sports, but I'm not like this is my life. I'm not married to it. Gotcha.、And、I'm very open to doing some other stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. You're polyamorous、yeah. towards sports. Yeah, exactly. There can be <laughs> multiple loves. <laughs> <laughs>、um, so the next one is. So you don't really like traveling. I don't. I remember when we were in Chicago. You were you were very upset about exploring the city. Oh my god. And we're now we're literally flying to New Zealand to go biking across that country. Um, can you explain this interesting duality of traveling but not liking traveling? So I think maybe I'm like I don't like traveling is wrong, and I just hate people. <laughs> Cause I. I realize that like when I think about my like anxiety about traveling, it's it has to do with being around people.、Mm-hmm. Like, you know, going to if when you usually travel, you go to those like touristy area and there's so many people, it's crowded、mm-hmm. and things are expensive. But it's just I, those are the travels I don't like. I don't like going to places to like see things. Like I don't want to go to Europe. For example, to see the museums or like Eiffel towers or whatever,、mm-hmm. like those, like trying to see those tourist things hides because that kind of stresses me out.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I really like the idea of going to New Zealand because the I'm go I'm going there to cycle. Like I'm not going there to like see things or like. And I'm not gonna be around people, which is、yeah. very nice because <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be going through very very unpopulated places. I guess it's gonna be touristy. It'll be like city, and then like just a couple people in city, and then just a couple people probably.、Yeah. I also really like nature. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I guess I don't, I probably wouldn't mind like traveling if I'm like going to the woods for 10 days and just stay in the, in the cabin for like the whole time. Nice. <laughs> well, I don't know if people call that traveling. If yeah. Just staying there. I mean, there's like the backpacking group of people who are more like traveling. They'll go to like, they'll go to Italy, but just for the mountains. They yeah. don't go to Italy for Milan. They go to Italy for the mountains. Yeah. Those <laughs> ones I, I really enjoy, but I just don't. It's so stressful when you're like, oh, I'm going to this country for a week and like you only have this much time. So you have to do this, this, this and this. Yeah. In like fucking 12 hours. <laughs> and I need a break. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to like stay in the hotel for the whole day. Yeah, I feel that. Um, so then what are you most excited about and most, I don't know, potentially, what are you most excited about and most fearful for when it comes to biking across New Zealand this winter? I think it's going to be the same thing, which is that this is a real adventure. Yeah. Like, this summer, you know, like, let's be real, it was not, like, it was not that hard. No. Like, yeah. you had a van, you had so much support, people are giving you food, you know where you're staying every night. And you don't have to carry any of your shit. Like, yeah, it was, it was kind of like a baby step of like, yeah, bike touring. Yeah. So, this kind of responsibility on my shoulder. Of, I mean, we are we are going together, but obviously we had to figure out together mm -hmm. where we are staying, where we get food, and how much we're gonna go. I think that kind of responsibility is scary, but also. So that's what makes it the real adventure, you know? Yeah. You're, you're totally on your own. Yeah. Just figure your stuff out. Yeah. That's really exciting. Like, after this trip, I can, like, be more proud. Yeah. And I can tell people, you know, like, we did, we just bikepacked like, through the yeah. South Island. Yeah. Like, that sounds, that to me s sounds so much crazier than biking across the country with vans yeah yeah because we had to do everything on our own like i mean we have an idea but like i mean you've heard my stories anything can happen oh yeah i'm anything. not i'm not convinced that anything's gonna happen in a way that we hope <laughs> <laughs> i'm prepared to be crying with you on the side of the road <laughs> um so then aside from just biking um what do you wish more people knew about you as a person um i it's funny because like people don't know me as a cyclist. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like all all my friends. Most of my friends know me as like a PhD student. So mm -hmm. cycling side is actually the part that I want people to know. Oh right. So, yeah. Well, I guess if you know about my cycling side, then I want people to know that I I study death and suicide in literature. And I'm interested in how different culture, like different places, different time, like conceptualize and deal with the concept of death differently. So, do you have any notable ideas in mind about that? Like anything you learned recently you want to share? Um, not particularly <laughs> yet, but it's very interesting, especially like idea of self killing because there are so many moments in time where it was not it was an acceptable way of ending one's life and it's only recently that like it became um it became something that is inherently bad like once if we hear somebody commit suicide we assume it's a tragedy we think it's like it's a failed attempt of helping people who need it who needed it but um so i'm kind of curious like how how that came to be i'm not like i'm not to put judgment on like what's right and what's wrong because that's out of my that's not what i'm here to do but i'm just very interested in like exploring different thoughts that goes to self-killing mm -hmm. Well, that's all of the questions that I have. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of climbing, in terms of, I don't know, like any other bike trips you want to do or anything else just you feel like sharing? Yeah, I, I want to do Japan. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do want to do Japan. It's like, it's gonna, that's going to be a very emotional one for me because I, I basically run away from that country. So 
like going back there to tour it, it's gonna be very fun. Uh, we'll see. I I have to go back there for my my brother's wedding because apparently he's getting married. He didn't tell me though. I was like, oh yeah, because my I was calling my parents right before the summer trip happened, and they were like, "Did your brother tell you he's getting married?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> oh my gosh. That sounds like we hate each other. We don't. We are like very civil, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. We just don't talk to each other as much because we don't feel the need to. Like he knows I'm doing well. I know he's doing well. Mm-hmm. Like, that's enough. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well. Oh my gosh. Well. That was pretty much the interview. Exciting. Um, Jima's awesome, yeah. clearly. And you'll be seeing our adventures when we're in New Zealand. Yes. It's gonna be amazing. I'll be posting things too. I'll be posting po- like poems every day. Like poems? I, I did this summer. I, I don't remember this. It's not It's not poems, right? It's like a really long paragraph every day. Yeah. On Instagram, because I had nothing else to do. Yeah. That's not true. I had Greek to do, but I didn't want to do it, so. Yeah. And I was like, today was hard. Yeah. Today was hard. The PhD life is just having work and, like, feeling guilty about it, but not doing it. Yeah. Like, that, I, I feel it when I was in college. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you all for watching. And, yeah, follow us. Follow us. Our journey. It's going to be really awesome. Yes. And, have your own amazing journeys sometime soon. Thank you. <laughs>